and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I am also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I am coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, which lies atop the traditional lands of the Atigamishing Anishinaabeg people, where I live with my partner, our two daughters, and our five cats. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you're a new viewer, a big warm welcome. This is primarily a knitting podcast. However, sometimes I talk about some of the other crafty rabbit holes I'm falling down. So yeah, um, I hope everyone's doing well and been getting lots of making done. It's been about three weeks since my last podcast and um, I have a few things to show you. I have two finished objects, um, one whip and two new cast-ons to talk about today. So should be a good episode. All right, so I'm gonna jump right into things. Uh, I'll start with what I'm wearing, which is my first finished object. So I am wearing the Soldatna crop, which is a pattern by uh, Boyland Knitworks, Caitlin Hunter, as she's known. Um, yeah, I knit this completely out of stash yarn that I had laying around. Uh, they're all, most of them are fingering weight, um, with the exception of this turquoisey blue that is a actual DK. So the pattern calls for DK weight yarn. And uh, like I said, I used mostly fingering weight yarns and just held them double to create the top. Um, so I'm, I'm happy with the colors. Um, the only thing I'm not super happy with is, is the width. So I did do a gauge swatch and I was on gauge. Um, and I don't know you know, I haven't measured my gauge since I washed and blocked the shirt, but I suspect because it's mostly super wash that it may have stretched on me when I washed it. So I'll just see if I can stand up and show you. But yeah, it's like really wide. So I think I would have liked a little more length and less width. So today I just have it on with a, um, a pair of jeans. It's actually kind of chilly out. Um, the intent was to make this to wear with my gold dress and I have worn it with that and it, it does look okay but again the width is kind of I don't know not 100% sold on it so I will pop in a pic or a video of me wearing this top with the gold dress and you can see what it looks like as an outfit <music> Like I said, I love the colors. I think the color combination worked really well. Um, and considering it was all stash yarn, I am pretty pleased that I was able to like throw this together. Um, but yeah, in retrospect, like I said, I'd probably make it less wide. Now the bust fits and that might be the problem. Maybe my, my waist is a little bit, it's smaller than my bust measurement and I didn't think about this. So yeah, I don't think I could have really gone smaller in the chest area uh, if I wanted it to fit, but definitely in the body I needed. I think maybe a more fitted, um, fitted design would work better. So yeah, um, I made a few modifications to the pattern. Uh, I had read that in several of the notes that there were issues with the fit, um, especially with the neckline being too um, high and funnily. So, what I did was I cast on 120 stitches and I skipped the first uh, first increase or two rounds and just kept kept knitting. And that's what I did. It's still a bit funnily, I'll admit. Like, I don't know if you can see in the back. It's still got this like bit of a hunchback look. I don't know. I don't know. Overall, I have to be honest, I don't think I, I love the fit of this of this top which is unfortunate because I do love the colors. I'll still wear it with my dress. I think it looks okay with the dress, um, but on its own, not so much. <laughs> oh, well, live and learn, right? And I actually decreased, like I didn't pick up as many stitches as the pattern suggested and the sleeves are still like quite roomy. <laughs> I don't know. It just doesn't fit the way I expected it to. Um, 
So I don't know if I can recommend this pattern actually, um, in terms of like the quickness uh, and the fun, it was a fun and quick knit pattern. However, again, not super pleased with the fit and maybe it's just my body, I don't know. But anyway, moving on, if you'd like to know more about it, um, I do have a Ravelry page where I keep all of my projects and there's notes in there and what I did to modify. Um, yeah. Yeah. And you can find out all of the different yarns that I used if you're curious. Um, yeah. Okay. Moving on to my next finished object. I did finish my pair of crocus socks. I'm calling them my crocus socks. That's not the official pattern name, but they were inspired by crocuses that I found blooming in my garden. And that's where I got the color choices from. Uh, but the original patterns, actually, it's based on the Crazy Sock Ladies DK sock pattern. Um, everything that I talk about will be linked down below if you're looking for it in the show notes. So yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty pleased with these socks. They were really fun to make. It was my first time marling, and I explained how I did the marling in the last episode. If you want, if you're curious on how I accomplished that, I also put the notes in my Ravelry page uh, describing how I did it. So... Yeah, it was, it was lots of fun. And I think DK socks may be my new go-to, um, you know, for vanilla socks, I think, because they, they knit up so quick. They're so comfy and uh, they're, they're just lots of fun, lots of fun to play with. I just, and I love that, like literally between the two, like it took me two days to knit these. I have a pair of fingering weight socks that have been on the needles for months. So what does that tell you? Anyways, yeah, highly recommend. And Kay's, uh, the Crazy Sock Ladies pattern is very, uh, very well described, easy to follow. And um, yeah, she, she does a lot of little tips, tips in there, tricks in there um, in terms of like avoiding things like the holes in the, in the corners when you're, when you're picking up for the gusset. Oh, she also does the uh, garter stitch sides on the heel flap that makes it easier to pick up so yeah really good pattern and it's free by the way so yeah definitely recommend checking it out okay so those are my two finished objects now i'll move into a whip <laughs> and this one i have shown numerous times but i do have some progress on it so i thought it made sense to to bring it out again this is my chestnut this is a pattern by Marie Wallen. It's an all over color work cardigan that is knit in pieces flat and then seamed. It's knit bottom up. And yeah, it's true feral. There's only two colors ever used in one row, which makes it a lot easier. <laughs> Although there are several, several ends that result from this to be woven in. So first off, I just wanna say I did take some time to weave in some ends. So yay me, because I absolutely hate it. And I just wanna show you proof that I did it. <laughs> I did a whole entire piece. Um, yeah, this is one of the front pieces. This is the front right. I also wet, washed and blocked all of the pieces um, just because I couldn't stand the curling. <laughs> um, yeah, so I wanted to mention the weaving that I did, the weaving in of ends that I did was using a different technique. So normally I use a, uh, a sewing needle and just, you know, sew in the ends. Um, but I follow an account on Instagram called Basil and Bell, that's Vicky, and she recommended using a small crochet hook. So I used, I think, a three millimeter crochet hook and just weaving in under the, under the floats. And um, yeah, so much faster, so much faster, I have to say. I don't love weaving in ends now, but um, I don't hate it <laughs> like I used to. So this is this is my new go-to method. I couldn't believe how much faster and enjoyable it was. So I highly recommend giving that a try. And there are lots of videos if you if you do a search for 
uh, weaving in ends with crochet hook. There's lots of videos on YouTube that show you how to do it. And yeah, highly recommend. Just, yeah, was awesome. So thanks, Vicki, if you're watching, thank you so much for that recommendation. Okay, so just to recap, I have finished all of the body pieces now. Actually, yeah, I hadn't finished them all last podcast. So I have now. Um, so this is the back piece. Still have lots of ends to weave in on this one. So that's the, the full back. I've already shown you the right. And here is the left piece. And I'll show you here just a close up so you can see all the beautiful colors that are in this pattern. There's eight different colors. And so finally, I am now working on the sleeves. And I feel like I've made some good progress. So this is what I have so far. Actually, it's curling because I haven't blocked this piece yet. Obviously, it's still on the needles. But I actually have two. Two sleeves. Yep, I'm knitting them two at a time. Some call me crazy. Maybe I am. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, I, the thought of knitting one sleeve and then having to go back and knit the other, um, it just, it did not appeal to me at all. So, so yeah, they're, I mean, they're knit flat. So it's not like when you're knitting socks in the round and you have to like shift your needles and, and it's not, it's not as complicated as that. Um, but I am using, you can see, can you see the ends? Yeah, there's four ends, but they're all, they're coming from two balls. Like I'm only using one ball of each color. So this is what I'm on right now. I'm using these two and I just use each end um, for, you know, a different sleeve. And yeah, I, I'm really enjoying doing this. I know, um, you know, it doesn't look like I have a ton, but that's, that's over two sleeves. So when I'm done, I'll be done both. And it really helps because, um, Marie's patterns are, um, how do I say this? They're, they're not complicated, but they do take a bit of, um, brain space to work through. <laughs> I'll say. So things like, you know, you're, you, you have to remember that you're working in color work patterns. So you have to keep track of which row you're on. Um, but at the same time, you know, you might be increasing, for instance, I'm, I'm knitting the sleeves cuff up so I'm increasing as I go and I have to keep track on which row you know it'll say increase one stitch at each end um, every fourth alternate row and then after so and so rows you do it every sixth alternate row and stuff like that so you just you have to be able to keep track of it and you know the fact that I'm knitting them both at the same time really helps because I know whatever I did on this one I'm doing on this one and they're going to be exactly the same and I don't have to do that whole you know, figure out which rows I'm increasing on, blah, blah, blah. Twice. <laughs> All in the one row. <laughs> I don't know. It just, it just works for me. It's, it's, I'm really glad I did it. Um, I know, I, I think there are others out there that have tried and, and not found it enjoyable at all. And, and I can understand that. I mean, there, it's not, it's not as straightforward as knitting with just the one, but, but for me, I, I'm liking it. So, yay. I do recommend giving it a try because you don't know, right? And you could always like, if you didn't enjoy it, if you didn't end up enjoying it, I mean, you could always just um, separate them. Just mark down whichever row you're on on the one sleeve and then just separate them and just do it one at a time. So it doesn't hurt to give it a go. Okay, so that's where I am in my, my Marie Wallen. What else did I want to say? I know. I am knitting this up as part of our uh, make along that's happening over on Instagram. It is a year of Marie Wallen Cal. You just have to use the hashtag. You have to have started your Marie Wallen project after August 1st of last year. And it's going to be running until August 1st of this year. And um, we've had so many beautiful makes, so many um, 
gorgeous finished objects and works in progress and I'm I'm finding out about patterns that I didn't even know were out there um, by Marie so she has like they're all over the place there's lots on Ravelry she even has some free patterns on Ravelry um, and she's you know she has her own books and she has patterns in like ro older Rowan magazines and stuff like that so like her patterns are all over the place and I certainly haven't seen all of them and yeah it, and she does crochet as well it's not just knitting so there's crochet and yeah we're having a lot of fun we have a slack group uh, slack is an app it's similar to discord if you're familiar with that and we're just chatting about our works in progress and perhaps enabling one another a little too much um yeah <laughs> i'll talk about that later on um with my one of my new my new cast ons but yeah it's it's a lot of fun so if you'd like to join the group i mean there's still time it uh you can just join the group in general too the knitting with cat hair podcast group is the same group on slack it just has a thread for the marie wallen um make along so yeah i think you'll see in a minute but i've cast on another marie wallen <laughs> So I may do, be doing like my own informal make along for years to come. Um, yeah, I'm certainly, I've certainly fallen, fallen down the rabbit hole of Marie Wallen patterns. Okay, so yeah, if you wanna get added, sorry, I don't know if I said this, but if you wanna get added, I will have the link down below and, or you can send me a message on Instagram and I will make sure you get added. Okay, moving on to new cast ons. So I'm just going to take a sip of coffee before it gets cold. Moving on to new cast ons. So I had mentioned last episode, I believe, that I was ordering some Holst, Holst Garn Super Soft cones. So I ordered four different colors and this is the Sweet Pea color. It's kind of like this pinky purple-y, really pretty color. Um, there's, there's definitely nuances to it. So when you see it in person, there's like yellow and purples and obviously pinks. It's just, it's a really beautiful color. So this one arrived and I had mentioned I really wanted to cast on a Marie Wallen lace cable pattern and I was trying to decide between the Clover, which um, Magda of Magda Knits had just finished and looked stunning. Um, or the Daffodil, which is a pattern that I actually already owned and it was in my uh, springtime collection book that I had purchased. And I had seen um, Mrs. Walgren Makes had made a, a Daffodil and you know, I think it was like a white color yeah it was white I can't remember which yarn she used but it looked beautiful um, also FYI Mrs. Walgren makes is a podcast as well and it is it is great she makes so many gorgeous things I highly recommend you check her out if you haven't before and then um, an Instagram um, account by the name of I think it's M Melly art or Melly makes I'll put the right name in so you can see she also made a um, a daffodil in in a gorgeous bright blue vibrant blue color and both of those projects really inspired me so um yeah with the pink i decided i was going to do a daffodil i'm thinking i'll still do the clover but i might do it in like a brown color because i have a, a couple browns that i old ordered as well so i've cast on for the daffodil like i mentioned it's in this springtime collection book by marie wallen see if I can pull up the picture here so this is it it's got a mixture of cables and lace and um, it's really fun like really fun I'm really uh, I was really enjoying it <laughs> um, but I do have to like I very much have to concentrate when I do it it's not one of those projects that's it's certainly not what you would consider a mindless project. And I think this might be my first time doing like more complicated lace, I guess. 
Um, I mean, I've done things like the ranunculus that has a little bit of lace at the top, um, while Posy has a little bit of lace in the flora version. I've done those before, but nothing complicated um, like this before. And I've done, I've done lace on socks. I was, yeah, I guess that's not true then because I have done lace on socks and it was complicated. Um, but not on a sweater. So this is my first time. So this is what I have so far. Let me make, you, make sure I show you the right side. Hopefully you can see it. I know it's always tricky with lace. Ugh. Okay, so there's, let's see, three lace panels. Yeah, one, two, three. And then two cable pa panels on the sides here. And then there's this uh, kind of simple cable running up the sides as well. Really pretty pattern. Um, I've already made several mistakes. <laughs> so luckily, I don't, I don't know if this is intentional, but I do appreciate the fact that you start with the back. <laughs> So I've made the mistakes on the back. So hopefully by the time I get to the front, I will be a pro and not making such mistakes. Um, I can show you, I can show you one that is very evident to me in this cable here. Oh. Um, where is it? Here. I don't know what I did. I think I dropped a stitch and then I picked it up. That's the problem with lace. If I drop things, I am in trouble because picking them back up and putting them on the proper way, um, it's just not easy for me. <laughs> but anyways, yeah, that's what I have. So I finished, obviously I finished the bottom ribbing band. I love how the ribbing kind of ties right into the pattern. It's really cool. And I'm almost done my first repeat and then it's just up the back so yeah really enjoying it and what can I say um, this is my first time using whole scarn it's um, almost like a crunchy feel to it it's really not a soft yarn but I'm told that once you wash it the reason it feels the way that it does is because it has still has all the spinning oil in it. It hasn't been washed, but I've heard that once you wash it, wash it, it really blooms and softens up. So I'm really looking forward to seeing how this, um, how this works, works up. And it is a two ply and it is a combination. It's a 50% Shetland, 50% Merino yarn. So yeah, really, really very much enjoying working with it. I forgot to mention, <laughs> I'm all over the place today. Um, I forgot to mention that uh, my chestnut is being knit up out of the original called for yarns, which is the Marie Wallen's British Breeds. And that is a combination of several breeds of British sheep. And it's interesting to me, um, the differences between all of the yarns that I'm currently using right now. Um, the, the textures are just like, they're all so different and I love each one of them individually for that it's very cool okay so that is one new cast on and then I have another cast on because you know what I cast off my socks and my Seldotna so come on I get I get two cast offs I get two cast ons that's how it works in my head anyway at least <laughs> I can always justify new cast ons um so yeah, housed in my handmade project bag is a brand new pattern that I'm knitting by Jennifer Steingass. So originally I had cast on for the gold, I think it's called the gold wing, the gold wing sweater. And then I realized, and I should have known, and I was already questioning it. I don't know why I still did it, but anyways, I realized that my contrast color was gonna, I wasn't gonna have enough, I didn't think, to, to do that one. And I also had another idea for the colors that I wanted to use um, for that particular pattern. So I've since torn it out and restarted um, knitting Bright Feather, which is also by Jennifer Steinkess. She, she has a thing, like on Ravelry, if you buy two of her patterns, you get a third free. So that's 
that's what I did. I bought three patterns on a couple days ago. Um, so yeah, I don't really have a ton to show because <laughs> I literally just cast it on yesterday. But it's being knit up out of the most beautiful pink. Pale, pale pink. I don't know if you can see all the gorgeous nuances in this color. Oh, I love it. This is New to Den by On Air Ock Air. Here it is in my giant ball that I wound up because I'm using it double-stranded. It's just such a joy to knit with. I, do, I love it so much. I, love, I can't even tell you. This color is just... I've been saving it. So I bought it, I think, last... Hmm, it might have been around this time last year. And I have been saving it because I really wanted to make sure that I, you know, chose the right pattern for it. And so I, oh, sorry, I'll pop in a picture of what Bright Feather looks like. I'm going to use, be using the pink as the main color. And then for the contrast color, I'm going to use this color. And it never shows up properly on camera. It's Shishbaneha. Um... I knit my wild posy out of it. My first wild posy I've knit two now, but the first one, it's like a brown with lots of um, peachy, almost pinky purple gold undertones. It's just gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And these, so these are going to be my two colors. Super low contrast, and that's exactly what I wanted. Um, I think it's going to look really pretty. So the feathers will be in this color. Yes, I'm super excited. <laughs> I'm loving all my projects right now. Um, this color is called Vilgot. And yeah, so the thing, if you don't know anything about Newtoden, New I know a lot of people are knitting with it and you probably heard about it, but anyways, it's a Swedish unspun fiber um, made in sm extremely small batches. They only ever, um, basically release the color that one time and then you can't get it again. Um, I love all the colors paired together. They all go so well together, um, especially when they do their collections. I have not ordered an entire collection. I think they do usually do like five colors in a collection. Um, but yeah, it sells out super fast. I talked about how I managed to get some in a previous episode, I can put the link down below if you're interested in some tips on how to get it. Um, the other option is if you join their Patreon account, if it's open, um, you get kind of like early access to the sale. You also get access to colors that the public doesn't get access to. So they'll create colorways that are specific to Patreon. And that this was one of them, that light pink. So, um, yeah, and you're supporting, you're supporting a small business, which is great. It's family owned, family run. It's it's amazing. And uh, Carolyn has YouTube videos that are absolutely gorgeous. She has this amazing eye for color, and her aesthetic is just is just beautiful. And I think I think she used to be a flower flower design like arranger for pictures oh I don't know the word I'm sure there's a word for this anyways you can tell she just she has this like amazing amazing eye for color and aesthetic so highly recommend checking out the YouTube videos as well and if you become a Patreon member you get full access to their entire video I think as a uh, general public you can just get little snippets um, of the yarns and stuff like that but anyways yeah really enjoying all of my projects and trying desperately not to cast anything else on because come on now <laughs> three sweaters on the needles okay a cardigan and two sweaters that's a lot um and they're longer term projects like that lace one's gonna probably take me quite some time but it's nice to mix things up i feel like the jennifer stein gas although it's color work is more simple um and it's quicker because it's thicker um thicker weight and it just it goes faster and of course the color work that I'm doing for my Marie Wallen is a lot more in depth and it's taking a lot longer and then the lace is more I have to concentrate 
So it's nice to have a balance of all different types of projects. That's what I need. That's what I need in my needles. I know some people just want one project. I would be so curious to know if you are a monogamous knitter or do you like to have all the projects on your needles? And do you have kind of a, um, a threshold <laughs> where once you pass that threshold, you feel completely overwhelmed? So if you have like, say five projects are good, but if you have six, you're no, too much. You start to get stressed out. Um, yeah, I think I definitely have a threshold. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a number and I think it might actually change depending on depending on my situation and how stressed I am about other things in my life. Um, so I think when I'm, maybe when I'm a lot more chill, I can cast on more things and feel okay with it. I don't know, that would be an interesting thing to keep track of actually, just curious. Um, yeah, so let me know in the comments down below, monogamous or not. And um, yeah, I just, I'm very curious. I've never been monogamous knitter. I don't think ever, or with any of my, well, that's not true. No, cross stitch, I definitely wasn't monogamous. I had all the cross stitch projects growing up at the same time. But like for other things that I'm just learning, crochet, I always just had the one. Oh, that's not true. I have two crochet blankets right now. Blankets don't count. Blankets don't count. They're long term. <laughs> okay, so that's it for all of my finished objects, works in progress, new cast ons. Um, and I, I know, like I said, I wasn't going to talk about acquisitions, but the only reason I'm talking about this is because I plan on knitting it next. So I just wanted to, to talk about it. So I had mentioned that I ordered a kit for the Samfrey, which is another Marie Wallen pattern. It is found in this absolutely gorgeous book called Shetland. I, I want to knit every single pattern in here. I just... I, I, they're gorgeous. <laughs> they're gorgeous. Um, yeah, just like every, every single pattern. Sorry. I'm just like looking at them going. Yeah. So even the hats. And so I might not, I might not want to do them in the exact same colors, especially the accessories. Um, cause it, I find there's a lot of blues and I'm not a huge blue, like blue, blue fan. I love turquoise. Um, but I don't really knit a lot of blues, but yeah, there's the brasse, definitely knitting that at some point. All of these patterns are knit with Jameson's of Shetland yarns. This is the Fettler scarf. The Ninian cardigan. Scalloway Tam. I already showed that one. I think she's wearing that with the brasset. Yeah. Oh, but look at the top of the Tam. Isn't that gorgeous? So pretty. This is Unst cardigan. Musa. It's like a tunic. I think, oh yeah, is this the one she's wearing? Yes. She does have, it does have a really high collar. Almost like a a turtleneck, but not tight. It's pretty. Um, the Burra Cowl, which um, Cher from the Lathe and Loom podcast, which is a great podcast as well. You should definitely check out. Um, she's knitting this cowl up for our make along. And I already mentioned that um, Alexandra of the November Woods Fiber Co. podcast is knitting up the Brisset that I showed earlier. This is the Samfrey. This is the one I ordered the kit for. Let's see if I can find a closer, closer up picture. The reason I liked it so much are the colors. 
definitely so it's got some turquoises in there and some gorgeous like moss green and some rusts there's purple just really beautiful really beautiful i can't wait to knit it <laughs> so that, that, that's given me more incentive to finish my chestnut because once i get that done then i can cast this one on i will not cast on until the chestnut is done this is called muckle row it's really pretty it's just got color work simple color work at the bottom i like how it looks like it's kind of faded that's really pretty and i think kia of the kia's bold podcast which is also an <laughs> amazing podcast i highly recommend checking out i believe she knit the muckle row yeah very pretty I thought this one might make a really nice um, men's uh, pullover. This is called a whale say, whale say. It's got really subtle color work and the colors they've uh, chosen to use a dark green and a light green. And maybe I think that it would look nice because John, my, <laughs> my partner loves green and I could see him wearing this. Although I don't know, I don't know if he'd wear it. Uh, he'd wear anything I make him. He's pretty good about that. Um, okay, then we have the Scaries mittens, which I definitely want to knit. It's so cute. They're like fingerless mitts. And of course, we have the infamous yellow cardigan, which um, several people are making, who's making that right now? Um, oh, Maggie of the Sonder, Sonder Knits, Sonder Knitting and Reading podcast. She's making the yell. And um, she's chosen to use different colors and it's really pretty, really pretty. Oh, and you should check out her podcast too. Really great podcast. I love that she talks about, um, well, she's a doctor, firstly, so she, she talks about some of the interesting things that are going on in, you know, in, in her career and stuff. And um, she also talks about the books that she's read, and she's like a prolific reader. She reads so many books of all different genres. So I get lots of recommendations on books I want to read from her. So, yeah. And, of course, she knits gorgeous things. So you should check her out. Okay, and that is it for the Patterns in the Shetland book. Gorgeous book. And so now, I don't know if you guys can see this. Oh yeah, you can. These are the colors for the Samfrey. <laughs> Aren't they gorgeous? Beautiful fall colors. Fall and, I don't know. It's almost like a rainbow, but like more of a like muted fall rainbow maybe anyways trying not to cast on <laughs> and I will say like our, our little group on the slack app um, they're really encouraging <laughs> they're always encouraging each other to to cast on something new oh my gosh oh who is it oh Amanda of the um Yarns and Brews podcast. Here I am dropping all these names, but she's got a wonderful podcast too. You should check her out. She is knitting all the Marie Wallen projects and she, I think she just cast on another one. So I think she might have three on the needles right now. Um, and she's already finished several others before that. So yeah, anyways, she's knitting the most gorgeous things and she does gorgeous um, hand spinning. You should definitely check out her podcast as well. It's really great. And um, yeah. So <laughs> we're all just enabling each other here. I don't know, good or bad, doesn't matter. As long as we're having fun, no one's getting hurt, right? <laughs> so yeah, I think that is it for all of the making chat today. And in terms of life stuff, I don't really have a lot going on as per usual. I feel like I say that every time. Um, let me think. The trees are in bloom and they look absolutely gorgeous. 
like absolutely gorgeous. We don't have any fancy like cherry trees or anything like that in our yard, but I think we have, I don't know, someone has called them pin cherry trees. It might be pin cherry trees. Anyways, they're in full white blossoming goodness. <laughs> they're just gorgeous. And um, this is a long weekend. So today is Friday. I'm off. I'm off every third Friday, which is nice because it kind of is when I try and record my podcasts. And um, it's a long weekend in, in Canada. It's Victoria Day long weekend. So we have our Monday off as well. Um, we're not, we don't really have any plans. We're just going to stick around. We might get out to the beach. Um, my daughter's been asking to go swimming. I'm sure the water is still way too cold, but you know, I don't know. Kids, kids don't feel things like adults do. I remember swimming in April. I used to live on a lake growing up and I would go swimming. The ice would just be off the lake and I'd jump in. And um, I probably didn't last too long in the water, but I definitely was swimming in, in, in April, which is insane. But um, yeah, that just goes to show you when you're a kid, you have like, no, no, you're not as wussy. <laughs> Let's say that. Now I'm like, <laughs> it has to be like July, August before I'll get in that water. <laughs> no, I don't know. But definitely May is too early. Anyways, um, my strawberries are blooming. I can't wait. I think we're going to get a whole bunch of strawberries, like I mentioned, as long as the critters don't get at them. I've chosen not to put netting over over them. I know there were some suggestions in the comments, I think either last, uh, last episode or the episode before. I'm going to see how things go. This is my first year having um, strawberry plants in the ground all year kind of thing. I just planted them last year, so we'll see how it goes. And... I'd like to do a bit of gardening this weekend. I need to get some clematis. I've been saying I'm gonna get clematis forever now to grow, to grow up the sides of my trellis, um, trellis swing that John built for me two years ago now. So the first step was to get some kind of bush in there first because clematis need shade over their roots. And um, so I've, I've got two honeysuckle bushes, one on each side that survived the winter and they seem to be thriving okay. So I think we're good. I think we're good. <laughs> and I hope they bloom this year because I just planted them last year and I never got a chance to see them bloom. So, oh, so many things to look forward to. I love flowers. Um, yeah, so hoping to do a bit of gardening. Gonna plant some vegetables this weekend too. Very excited for that. My, my last attempts at planting vegetables didn't go well. <laughs> so we're giving it another go. I'm not giving up, especially with the price of food. Oh my goodness. I cannot believe the price of groceries. Um, obviously for various reasons. Yeah. Climate change has a lot to do with it too. I know COVID is a big, is a big um, driver for prices as well. And like the lack of availability of trucking and stuff like that and getting produce to places, but um, climate change is playing a huge effect on that too, sadly. Um, yeah, so what else? I don't know, we've, uh, we've been watching the Hunger Games trilogy. I've never watched all of the movies. I haven't read the books either, although I've heard they were good. Um, I, so we watched with with uh, our youngest daughter. She's she's 12, so it's PG-13. We let her watch stuff that's PG-13. Um, so we watched the first Hunger Games, which she really enjoyed. And then we just watched the second one, which is what, Catching Fire or something like that. Watched that yesterday, last night. Um, it was okay. I think the first one's the better. I don't know, isn't that? The, it seems to be the truth for most movies. <laughs> The first one's always the best. Um, but yeah, so we're going to watch the third one this weekend. And uh, yeah, looking forward to see how the story ends. Um, yeah, I don't know. Probably just stick around, like I said. Maybe go for a bike ride or walk. Yeah, I think that's about it. I will leave it there. I hope that you have the most wonderful next three weeks wherever you are and that you 
get lots of making done and um, I'll talk to you then. <laughs> Bye.